This is the Fantex P600S, and in many ways it's an Evolve on the interior with a P-Series exterior, and I'm perfectly satisfied with that, especially considering the $50 price markdown for this model. At one point, the P400 was my favorite mid-tower case. Competition has become pretty fierce as of late, but Fantex has done an incredible job revamping the P-Series flagship with a modestly over-engineered and sexy release sporting, uh, yeah, nylon. Are you in dire need of, yeah, an upgrade? Look no further than Power Color's Red Dragon Vega 56. At only $319 from March 8th to the 11th, and three Epic Games included, you're getting one heck of a bargain. Purchase now via the link below. Seeing as though this case in terms of function nearly matches the Evolve X we reviewed in this video right here, I'll spend the bulk of this video testing Fantex claims uh, regarding the nylon paneling up front and on top, but we'll do a quick run through of support for those who are new to the Fantex scene. This is a seven slot, three vertical slot mid tower with support for up to a 360 millimeter fan rad combo, both up top and up front. You can throw a single 120 or 140 on the rear as well. Uh, you'll find three 140 mil Fantex branded fans included with the P600S. They do a great job staying quiet, surprisingly under load. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't really have a problem using these for a high-end build. With the case, you'll find a large accessory box with four modular hard drive trays, zip ties that you probably won't even need, and a case full of necessary screws. I actually suggest saving this. It's really cool that Fantex even includes one to begin with. Uh, and then you can sort by screw size and thread for future builds. It's very similar to something I use daily, and it definitely comes in handy. Support for up to ATX motherboards is present. Since the motherboard tray is indented toward the front for extra cable management headroom, you won't be able to stuff anything larger in here here in terms of motherboard uh, compatibility. The cable sliders are probably my least favorite aspect of this case, if I'm being honest. I talked about this a bit in my Evolve X review. Uh, I just feel as though they're over-engineered, essentially trying to reinvent the wheel, in my opinion. Uh, like the, the rubber grommets, uh, in this case, I think, would have been just a much easier thing to implement uh, and then would have been just functionally easier to work around. In this case, my 24 pin was sitting awkwardly and there really wasn't much else I could do about it. So yeah. Elsewhere, however, things look pretty great. There's a dedicated PCIe cable cutout in the basement, uh, which you can open or close with this plastic cover. Large cutouts under the motherboard tray, allowing for routing things like HD audio, front IO, and USB 2.0 cables, whatever really you want down here. Up top, a large opening provides ample space for any extra fan cables and things like your 8-pin EPS. Fantex conveniently lists clearance metrics on their website, by the way. I'll go ahead and read through a couple. Uh, the CPU cooler uh, metric is for the height of of a CPU cooler up to 190 millimeters, and graphics cards up to 435 millimeters long uh, will fit in the P600S. You'll find this is a rather large mid-tower, but I think it works here because there's just so much going on inside. There's, there's really no empty space, uh, even without a custom loop. So on the back, we've got our 120 or 140 mil fan mount, rear IO cutout, seven plus three PCI slots, and a PSU cutout with included bracket. Uh, just attach it to your power supply, slide it through the back, and then secure to the chassis with two captive thumb screws. Uh, a small removable dust filter is included underneath, by the way. You'll find plenty of space under the basement for even extended power supplies, especially if you don't plan to attach the three and a half inch base. In fact, even if you were using a beefy power supply with cable extensions, you know, including the, the traditional cable length, I highly doubt you'd find yourself running out of room. And this speaks to the sheer volume allotted to the right portion of the P600S. There's so much space on this side for cable management and storage. It really is a beautiful thing. You even get tons of Velcro straps included. They're kind of integrated into the case. So I, I highly doubt you'll need the zip ties they threw in. See why I said that. Uh, still nice to have though. Like everything back here is so simplistic in a way, despite looking fairly busy with all the cables tucked in and running around. The magnetic right panel on the case, which we'll talk more about in a second, closes with literally one finger. That's how much space we've got on this side. So uh, yeah, cable management on this one is definitely a 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about these panels. Panels. Both the left and right panels are hinged and can swing open slightly past 180 degrees. I tried removing mine, but uh, yeah, unless they were super glued down, they they weren't coming off. I don't know. I don't know if they're supposed to be removable. I th they were on the Evolve X, but uh, at least this sample here, I could not get them off. I felt like I was going to break the case, so I just left them as is. The good thing is because it swings open past 180, like it, it's really versatile. You can kind of 
make space where you need it. The tempered glass on the left panel is lined with damping material to seal the internals and trap sound. It's also only slightly tinted, which actually looks really great on this white model. As for the right panel, we've got no tempered glass, which I'm fine with, but instead we've been uh, welcome to sound damping pads and the same trim around the edges to properly seal off the build. And, and look, apart from the magnets baked into the two doors, there's really nothing else holding these things in place. Now the Evolve X, if I'm not mistaken, included optional little thumb screw points to keep the doors closed during transport. Like if we assume the magnets failed, they, they weren't holding anymore. Um, it prevented those doors from swinging open, but I'm not seeing that in the P600S. So Fantex must be pretty confident about the strength and durability of these magnets. There are four inside each door. The top of the case is rather bare, sporting only a white glowing power button and a removable panel that either suppresses sound when equipped or allows the case to breathe a bit more when removed. Its insides are covered with the same damping material found on the right panel and is also held in place with a few magnets. The front of the chassis is what I'd like to focus on last because we'll manipulate the heck out of it during our temperature and airflow test. So unlike more traditional mid towers in its price category, the P600S includes modular front and top panels intended to either keep things quiet or cool. And those panels will sit in place of uh, what you would normally see beneath them, which is nylon. And then behind the nylon, a uh, very thin metal mesh, which essentially acts as a dust filter. So what I really want to talk about is this nylon because it is something that I've never seen before in a PC case uh, at all. And I think it does a great job at allowing air to pass through it unhindered. So uh, you'll see that here in a second, but I do want to say that we saw this in earlier stages at Computex. Fantex kind of wanted to play around with it, see if they could actually turn this into a full scale production and implement it into cases. And here they are doing that. It's pretty awesome. They were claiming three times the airflow of conventional mesh filtering. Wasn't totally on board with that until I ran our stress test. And uh, I'll say this, the P600S has the best airflow of any case I've ever tested in the config that we tested it in. I can't say it's the best on the market, but I mean, it's pretty incredible. So the nylon essentially kills two birds with one stone. It filters larger dust particles and hair uh, while occupying a significantly smaller area, meaning air should be less impeded when pulled by the front fans. It doesn't comprise a single sheet or, or layer of the same way that like a metal filter would. Uh, it actually does look like it's interwoven twice. So you have two nylon layers stretched to spec without the use of glue or anything that could potentially break down with time, which is nice. You can clean this stuff pretty easy and even potentially replace it with other colors in the future. So we'll see what Fantex decides to do in the coming months. If you, if you could swap this with like a white mesh filter, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, but what I will say is that the use of this stuff is brilliant. So here are our temperature results. Compared to our Be Quiet Dark Base 700, which had integrated filters and a rather closed off front panel, CPU temperatures for the P600S were about 3.5 degrees Celsius lower, uh, but that wasn't the coolest part. When we removed the front panel and mini mesh filter underneath, core temps dropped to 67.2 degrees. Still a degree lower than our Dark Base 700, likely due to the inclusion of additional fan pointed at the CPU cooler, uh, but we still aren't at the coolest part. Here are the CPU temps with only either the mesh filter or nylon panel installed. I re-ran these tests three times each to confirm that the nylon was actually less restrictive than the mesh, which is, I mean, this is a very thin mesh here, probably some of the, 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 the most permeable mesh I've seen, and only resulted in a 0.3 degree Celsius bump over our run without a panel installed at all. Something else to note, our graphics card temps literally went unchanged throughout these tests. In the conventional position, ample airflow is supplied. Uh, however, we did not test the card in a vertical config simply because, I mean, it'd be pressed literally against the left glass panel, effectively choking it of air. You guys know it's not an optimal position. You could run it there if you want, but it's gonna run a lot hotter and probably louder, especially considering the fact that it's only like gonna be that far from the glass. So I really only recommend these kinds of slots for custom water coolers with graphics card water blocks on a closed loop. Otherwise, you'll wanna use the vertical kit from either Cable Mod or Cooler Master. I've reviewed both. You'll see them pop up here in a second. So back to the temps, and this is where we'll wrap up the video. The nylon is 
incredibly porous. I haven't been able to test this for a week as like a standalone filter to see how much dust it actually allows into the case, maybe a separate video for that. But even if you were to still sport the mesh filter underneath it, which is basically the panel on scenario, you'll only see a tiny bump in temperatures. In our case, that bump was as small as 1.5 degrees. If we stress both our CPU and GPU to the point where they're you know, being utilized 100% each, those margins would probably spread a bit. You know, the card would run a bit hotter, the CPU would probably run closer to 80, 85 degrees Celsius. But one thing's for sure, I'd be much more comfortable, you know, maxing out both my CPU and GPU workloads in a case like this, which allows the user to define his or her airflow preference. If things are getting a little too hot, just remove the, the, the two covers, the one on top and the one up front, and you'll be good to go. I mean, literally, this is as good as removing the panel entirely. I mean, give or take half a degree Celsius. And the nylon still looks good. Airflow properties are fantastic. The sound, you know, the stock fans produce is hardly detectable. So I would argue that you don't even really need the covers. I mean, the covers are nice. Like if you want just like a bare front and top panel, that's cool. And you do have that sound damping material, which does in fact uh, reduce the overall audible tones produced by the, 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 the system. Uh, but I, I mean, if, if this was my build and I was just gonna sport this for a month or two, I would totally remove these and, and never use them uh, because I think the nylon looks good enough on its own. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, I think it'd be really cool if we could get the white mesh with the uh, the white nylon with the white chassis. That'd be really cool. Um, the black is a nice contrast, but it might not be in everyone's taste. That said though, it still looks really good. So I would not have a problem at all. And I said, I would actually prefer to run the nylon exposed uh, rather than covering it up and then letting my system run hotter as a result. And back to the fans for a second, uh, just for some reference, look, they aren't as good as the ones Be Quiet includes in their Dark Base 700. Silent Wings 3 are some of the best fans out there. Uh, but you get three here instead of two that Be Quiet includes, which makes up for the difference and arguably extra. Uh, so look, if you're, if you're looking to spend, let's say over a hundred bucks, uh, between 100 to 200 dollars on a mid-tower case, this is a serious contender. Aesthetically, I don't think it's as sexy as something like the PC-11 Dynamic, which I think is still probably my favorite case, but the function of the P600S is undeniable. I'd like to see the same nylon implementation in smaller cases from Fantex, like maybe the P300 or the P350X at you know, like th those price points, then we'd be talking. Uh, and I, I think the P350X is still the best priced case, one of the best priced. I mean, the, the H500 from his XT is still a really good priced case as well. Uh, but if we get that mesh in the P350X or something similar to that for around 60, 70 bucks, oh, that's gonna be it. That, to me, that will dominate that entire price category. It'll be better than the Meshify C. Uh, it'll be better than the H500, just because it'll still look really good and prioritize airflow at the same time. It's hard to get both today's day and age. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us.